So I did a video, a previous video, on why you should be wary of using the static keyword. Naturally, I'm amongst many others that have this opinion, but even though some people find it slightly controversial. And since then, I've had a few discussions. It has come to my attention that some argue the need for uh, or the usefulness of uh, static functions because they argue they move towards a functional style of programming. In other words, the argument is that static functions resemble functional programming. I think this is a fallacy, so let's talk about that. So the argument is that static functions are actually not like functional programming. Let's dig into this. Functional programming has many important concepts. Two of them are that functions are first-class citizens and that the functions are higher order, i.e. higher order functions. So I'm not at all an expert, but the way I understand it, it seems to me that, that functions are first-class citizens and that functions are higher order are sort of two sides of the same coin. They're sort of the same thing. Higher order functions is the mathematical concept, whereas functions being a first-class citizen is a computer science concept. So, so concretely, uh, functions as a first-class citizen essentially mean that you can create a, a variable and create a function and reference the function in the variable and then pass the variable around. Higher order functions, on the other hand, the mathematical side, very simply means that a function can take a function as an argument and or return a function as output from the function or as a return from the function, essentially, which is actually not strange at all. So if you think about the function map, right, when you have a collection and then you map a function over that collection, that's an example of taking a function as an argument. Conversely, if you think about the concept of partial application, if you think about curry, that's an example of returning a function. We won't dig into what these specifically mean, but essentially, if, if you're familiar with these, these are examples of taking a function and returning a function. So that's higher order functions. Now, returning back to the topic, the point I wanted to emphasize with the previous video where I argued that you should be wary of using the static keyword is that the problem of using static is that we are coupling to implementations and not to abstractions. Instead of, instead of uh, painting this picture as a problem, let's paint this as an opportunity. What we want is that we want runtime substitutability, essentially dynamic dispatch. We want to be able to call a method without knowing which object the method resides in. Writing flexible code becomes really tricky otherwise. So such a concept is easily supported if you're in a language where functions are first-class citizens or higher order because you can construct functions that take functions which essentially mean that you can exchange the function, i.e. the implementation, at runtime. Static functions, however, does not work this way. Static functions, generally, you can't pass around. So I would even go as far as to say that not only are static functions not like functional programming in style, but actually, I think they're less like functional programming than if you would do classic object orientation. Because in classic object orientation, you have polymorphism, you have interfaces. So if you think about it, if you construct an interface that only has one method, and then you have another method that takes something that implements that interface as an argument, then essentially that's like passing a function. Not really, but, but almost, right? Because then you have substitutability at runtime, right? You have polymorphism at runtime which you don't have with static functions. So again, functional programming is fantastic, but the argument against static functions have nothing to do with functional programming. So whenever you find someone arguing that you should move towards static functions because it's more like functional programming, please give them this video because there are many good reasons to believe that they're actually not. I hope this helps straighten some things out. And if you want more programming talks like this, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe.